Hey there, Autism Fitness founder Eric Chesson, leading the movement for movement. And if you are ready, even if you don't know you are ready because you are ready to become an Autism Fitness certified pro, head on over to autismfitness.com. Click the certification button. It will take you directly to the information page. And more importantly than that, well, just as importantly than that, but more importantly than that, it will take you to the button that enables you to register and go on your journey along with me to becoming an autism fitness certified pro the autism fitness difference is that in addition to the online course there is a full day virtual or in-person practical your choice where you will get the hands-on brains on feet on training that you yes you and your athletes yes your athletes deserve so in this Tuesday training series, we're going to be talking about the five whys and getting specific about each why in autism fitness training. So we know generally that fitness is not just important, but critical for all populations, the autism and neurodivergent population notwithstanding. However, we want to specify and really get into the details of why it is so critical for these populations because it doesn't seem to be the case that most individuals on the autism spectrum have access to meaningful, well-designed, well-coached, and scalable general fitness based in resistance training programs. So in our first of the five whys, I'm going to be talking about independence. Independence is and always has been a, well, not always, but let's say the last 25 years has been a beacon and buzzword in the autism and neurodivergent world. And for good reason, we want our individuals, regardless of their age or ability level, to be more independent. But let's break this down, operationally define it, and discuss what this actually means. So independence at a basic definition means that we are able to do something on our own sans the intervention or help of anybody else. And as we know, this is often a point of challenge, difficulty, contention, use whatever verbiage you want here for the ASD population in a variety of areas. We can talk about self-efficacy. We can talk about hygiene and healthy living. We can talk about meal preparation. We can talk about uh, self-advocacy. We can talk about activities of daily living. So that's the other one, meaning the things that we have to do on a daily basis or even a weekly basis that involve some type of physical movement. So in our realm, meaning fitness for this population and uh, resistance-based training at that, what independence really means is to break it down, to distill this to its simplest form. An individual is able on their own to complete a task that is either necessary or beneficial for them in their lives without any type of support. Now, here's the other part of that. Of course, we want to build general strength and mobility and physical capability for our autism and neurodivergent athletes to be more dependent in their daily lives, whether we're talking about kind of the, the choice or classic examples of taking out the garbage and doing the laundry and finding things and grabbing things in a high cabinet and finding things and grabbing things in a low cabinet and opening doors and sitting down and standing up and upstairs and downstairs and carrying gardening stuff and uh, grabbing a bunch of objects at once and picking it up safely and, and carrying it to another place. All of these things require strength. They require mobility. They require strength, endurance. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, yes. But here is, and this is where it's going to get a little bit technical, movement inhibition. Or from the adaptive standpoint, behaviorally inhibited desire or motivation to engage in an activity. If a movement feels like crap and we don't want to do it so it doesn't it it feels difficult 
or our mobility isn't good, or we don't feel strong enough and movement isn't fluid, then we are going to be less likely to engage in that activity. Case in point, in any population, look at the general physical activity level of a six-year-old versus a 60-year-old. Is there more movement or less movement? Why? Because we have not just age, but what comes with age? Atrophy, meaning muscular degeneration and loss of lean muscle, loss of mobility, loss of bone density. All of these things contribute to the fact that older populations are less likely to not only move, but less likely to move well and less likely to enjoy that movement. Are you following? So if we make fitness a pillar of programming of daily life for the autism and neurodivergent population, then here's the contingency. So if we make that a standardized practice, then we can improve strength mobility, strength, endurance, and by proxy of that, the initiation or the motivation that self, that, that self-advocacy, right, or that self-starting to engage in these other activities of daily life. So half of that, I don't know the percentages, but let's say for the sake of this one-sided conversation, half of that is based in that individual's ability to move and move well. And the other half of that is based in that individual's motivation or initiation to move and to complete that task. So you have two things working here. You have capability and you have confidence. Confidence, of course, because we're not just going to throw out a litany of words here and say, oh yeah, developing like balance and stability and confidence, like every... ASD-based program does that. And I don't like doing it because we don't always know how to operationally define or identify that with every individual. So rather than say, oh, they'll develop balance, they'll develop coordination, they'll develop confidence and a greater sense of, of self, and they'll achieve a sense of nirvana. I don't know, right? But we know that if someone is more capable of producing an outcome, they are likely or more likely to initiate in it. And that we can say is kind of the primordial basic chemistry of confidence, right? The knowingness of being able to do something. Oh, I got this. I can do this. So that is where we begin with that independence. But as practitioners or as future practitioners, what we're doing is enabling and empowering the autism and neurodivergent population through fitness resistance-based programming that makes sense for their current level of ability and developing the squatting and pushing and pulling and carrying skills so they can utilize them outside the confines of the gym or adapted PE session or clinic or um, autism and neurodivergent organization, wherever we're running fitness program, that is the key. These are the two things that we need to establish capability and confidence. And then we have greater independence. Now, where does fitness fit in with all of this? Well, I spoke about some of the ADLs activities of daily living. What we are building is a better functioning, a stronger, more stable, better moving body for any of life's challenges, the daily stuff and the stuff that comes along once a week, once a month, once or twice a year, right? So you think about all the ways in which we should, must, and can move and a general fitness program that is well put together and well coached and is linear, like over time we progress, is going to improve all of those skills. So my question to you is, are you implementing a program that is going to improve that capability and confidence so that your athletes or future athletes can, in fact, 
become more independent. So that is why number one for autism fitness, the five whys of autism fitness, independence. If this has been helpful for you, please like, please subscribe, definitely share this. I am Autism Fitness founder, Eric Chesson. Thank you for watching this edition of Tuesday Training. If you have a question, you can either leave it in the comments below or reach out to me directly, info at autismfitness.com. And if you're ready to become an Autism Fitness certified pro, you know where to find it. Oh, well, if you don't, autismfitness.com, click the certification button. Everything is right there for you, including the course syllabus.